Moving the money. Funds for the planned one-stop homeless center in Gainesville are being spent elsewhere. We'll explain. A new lead in Putnam County. Police tracked down a tip about a missing child, Haley Cummings. The latest. And looking for puppy love, a pit bull breeder surrenders dozens of puppies in Manatee County. Find out how you can help as TV20's Morning Edition starts now. From your local source, WCJB TV20, this is TV20 News Morning Edition. Good morning and thank you for waking up with us on this Friday, February 22nd. I'm Corey Lovett. I'm Mike Potter. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great start to your day and happy Friday. It's uh, nice to get to the end of the week. It feels happy great Friday. outside. Not the same chill we had yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, almost 80 in a lot of spots. It was quite wow. warm. I had my shorts and T-shirt on and enjoying the No great jacket outdoors. required, that's not, for sure. Not at all. None this morning. I'll tell you what, it's pleasant though. 50s for the most part inland with a few low 60s scattered about with 62 out of the coast of Cedar Key. Bits of clouds overhead during the night, but not bad overall. A few patches of ground fog possible, but overall I think most of our area is pretty quiet. Uh, some showers in the Atlantic. Those are moving away from the coast. Late today, we could see a stray shower or thunderstorm, mainly north of Gainesville, but rain chances low today. Upper 70s noontime, how about 82 later on this afternoon over the interior with cooler low 70s out of the Gulf Coast uh, later on. So Hard to complain too much about yeah, that. I know, but there's going to be stuff going on this weekend, change coming in our weather pattern. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Well, before you head out the door, let's check with Bob Albert. He has area traffic. Good morning. Good morning, Corey. Hi, Mike. Still seeing some delays along 451 this morning, traveling between Ocala and Gainesville around the 301 split. They expect some slowdowns heading into Ocala, traveling southbound. We've been seeing delays on 451 this morning, busy around State Road 40 already, heading southbound out of town to Bellevue. No real problems yet. We're accident free actually in both directions there. Sports Service, if you look at Toyota, I'm Bob Albert. That's your WCJV TV 20 traffic team report. Thanks, Bob. A large federal grant that was set to help pay for the one-stop homeless center in Gainesville has to be spent elsewhere. The city's housing authority staffers have known since October 1st about a deadline in June to spend the money, but did not address the issue with commissioners until now. TV20's Chris Gilmore explains where the money is being moved. That money is not lost. That money's just been reallocated to other programs within our city, and that's where it is. Murray's correct, but the money's being reallocated away from the One Stop Homeless Center and into the Homeowner Rehab Program. The commission approved 21 different projects involving house replacement or rehabilitation in the city. At least one commissioner isn't happy about the change of plans. And all of a sudden we're being told that, you know, we spend this money or you're going to lose it in the future. And, and I'm just not happy with that. And i got to believe that at home, I don't care who you are, but at some point we have got to stop just the rampant spending and slow down and prioritize things and then move forward. If the city wants to get money in the future from HUD, they must spend the money they already saved. According to federal regulations, the Community Development Block Grant funds can't exceed 1.5 times the actual annual grant amount. In order to ensure this doesn't happen, city commissioners suggested that money be shuffled away from the one stop. The Homeless Assistance Center is basically going to address those individuals and families that are homeless, provide them with a variety of services, case management services, job training services, and also look at potential of identifying opportunities for them to increase their employment skills and eventually leave the Homeless Assistance Center and become productive individuals. Chase feels like HUD is giving the city a tough ultimatum. Use it or lose it. The main source of my frustration is to be told by our federal government, spend your money faster so we can give you more, when in fact we're not spending it because we're being prudent with it, and now we're just going to blast it out there and, and hopefully we get the same amount in the future. The city has been saving money for the One Stop project for the past eight years. City manager Russ Blackburn says to pay for One Stop will require the city to dip into the reserves or to go into debt at this point. Well, while you were sleeping, authorities in Alachua County were out looking for a gas station robber. Deputies say a man went into the Kangaroo gas station on 43rd Street and 16th Avenue and picked up a pack of beer. When he got to the counter, he pulled out a pocket knife and demanded money from the clerk. It's not clear whether the man made off with the cash and the beer, but he did get away. Canine units were out looking for him, but no luck.
She was the school crossing guard of the year. He was known for his cheery attitude while working as a crossing guard at a school. But this couple from Newberry tragically died in a car crash Wednesday night. 77-year-old Julia Barlow and 76-year-old Wilbur Barlow died when the couple ran their car into a truck trailer that was backing into a lot off the side of County Road 335 near US 41. As the news spread, Alachua County Sheriff Sadie Darnell explained how this couple was dedicated to their jobs as crossing guards. Every single day uh, they were committed to doing what was necessary to ensure the, the children's safety, but more importantly they wanted to make a difference in the lives of the adults and children uh, that they interacted with. Julia Barlow worked near Kanapaha Middle School and Kimball Wiles Elementary. Wilbur Barlow worked near Newberry Elementary School. The driver of the truck, 46-year-old Floyd Watt of Winter Park, has not been charged, but an investigation is underway. It's been more than four years since little Haley Cummings disappeared from her home in Putnam County, but the investigation fired back up this week. Investigators checked an area in South Putnam County after receiving a tip, but sheriff's deputies say it turned up nothing. Sheriff Jeff Hardy says his main focus is on the criminal investigation. Agency officials are still not giving formal interviews due to the sensitivity of the case. Deputies say there is no new information pertaining to the investigation. Former Gator quarterback Tim Tebow will not be speaking at a controversial church in Dallas, Texas. The outspoken Christian football player was scheduled to give a talk at the First Baptist Church in April. On his Twitter page, Tebow did not specifically say why he was canceling, but wrote about new information that has been brought to his attention. The church he was going to is led by Dr. Robert Jeffress, who has been criticized for his stand on homosexuality, Islam, and Mormonism. Happening around the state, another family member has died after a shooting in Miami early Wednesday morning. Neighbors say shots rang out, and soon after, they saw first responders on the scene. One man was found dead in the yard. Three others were also shot. It's believed that it was the man's son who died in a Miami hospital yesterday. A 14-year-old girl and her mother remain hospitalized hospitalized, both in critical condition. Emergency crews say everyone suffered several gunshot wounds. Some of these officers were seen running out of the house, carrying a child into fire rescue. Authorities are still working on a motive for the shooting. Secretary of Homeland Security Janet Napolitano made a stop in South Florida earlier this week. She joined Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz in Fort Lauderdale to see customs and security operations at Port Everglades. The tour is part of the Homeland Security Department's ongoing efforts to facilitate lawful travel and trade. The duo also toured Miami International Airport. The Manatee County Animal Shelter is issuing a plea to the community for help after a breeder surrendered dozens of pit bull mixes. As Laura Harris reports, after taking in the puppies, the shelter is nearly at full capacity. We are uh, rapidly um overpopulating and we would like to get them out of here. Joel Richmond, Animal Services Enforcement Supervisor in Manatee County, says the 31 pit bull mixes they took in last week have put a strain on their shelter. We, we continuously have animals coming in, so it's a, it's a, it's a chore and a task to uh, you know move our animals out, find adoption homes for them. Richmond says the shelter is about 70% full. That 70% does not include the 17 puppies that are in foster care right now. They'll be placed in the shelter once they're old enough to be spayed or neutered. And while Richmond doesn't want to see surrenders like this. The dogs may be better off in the shelter than they were at the breeder's home. There were some minor shelter violations. Um, we did have some puppies um, that we were able to place in the foster, but um, it, it was a lot of animals for a small property and for one person to take care of. There have been no charges filed against the breeder yet, but there is an ongoing investigation into the living conditions of the dogs that were surrendered. Well, coming up, it's glued to our hands or our ears for many hours each week. But how do cell phones affect our health? There's still a lot of questions. We may have some answers in your health report. Then later in the show, for 20 states, Old Man Winter is making a major appearance. Whiteout conditions are complicating travel. We have details. It's 6.09. Stay tuned.